We'll call the uh, Board of Selectmen's meeting for Wednesday, December 7th, 2022, to order at 6.30. Mr. Town Manager, we have non-public uh, non tonight. We do. We have three items under um, employment and collective bargaining agreement. Okay. Okay, consideration of minutes. November 2nd, 2022, regular meeting. I'll make a motion to approve as presented. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, next is November 10th, 2022, special meeting. I'll make a motion to accept them as written. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, these are non public. Okay, the next is a temporary event permit. Wolfboro Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, December 7th, 2022 at approximately 6.30 at the Great Hall, 84 South Main Street, Wolfboro, New Hampshire. The consideration of a temporary event permit for the Friends of Wolfboro Community Bandstand to host annual summer concert series, July 1, 8, 22, 29, and August 5th, 12th, 19th, 26th, September 2nd, 2022, should be 23, I think. I agree, 23. 23. At Community Bandstand from 5 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. Somebody here to speak to that as far as the public hearing? Okay, seeing nobody, I'll close the public hearing. <clears throat> Board, somebody want to make a motion? Make oh. the mo. Okay, I'll make the motion. That was me. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. You just look. You got a deep voice. I know it's very deep. Heck of a motion. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so anyone want to say so moved? Or second? Second. I'm only kidding. I'll make the motion. Uh, I move to approve. Uh, Temporary event permit for Friends of the Wolfboro Community Bandstand to host the annual summer concert series July 1st, 8th, 22nd, 29th, and August 5th, 12th, 19th, 26th, September 2nd at the Community Bandstand from 5 p.m. to 9.30. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 The next event permit, the Wolfboro Board of Select will hold a public hearing Wednesday, December 7th. 2022 at approximately 6.30 at the Great Hall, 84 South Main Street, Wolfboro, New Hampshire. Consideration of a temporary event permit. Special event committee of the Economic Development Committee to host the annual Last Night Wolfboro in the Great Hall. Town, of, uh, Town Hall, Community Center, Brewster Academy, December 31st, 2022 from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Dave, yeah, I will um, speak to this. Um, the Special Events Committee is a part of the Economic Development Committee, and we put on last night Wolfboro. It'll run from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. The scavenger hunt will run from December 24th to December 31st with prizes awarded at Dece on December 31st. The Boy Scout Troop 165 has acquired the donation prizes for the hunt for the committee. The escape house will be run on December 31st from 10 to 2 at the railroad station and will be run by the Girl Scout Troop 58756. Games and crafts will be, and displays will be up here in the Great Hall from 11 to 1.30 p.m. Just Bob and Marla interactive music puppets will be in the back corner of the Great Hall from 12.30 to 1.30. Bingo, we'll have two sessions at Brewster Esterbrook Hall. The first session will be from 1 to 2, and the second session will be from 2.15 to 3.15. Ice skating will be at Brewster's temporary outdoor rink and will be from 10, 1 to 2.30, and again from 8, I mean from 6 to 8 p.m., 
And of course, that's weather permitting. On a day like tonight, it wouldn't be. Uh, Northeastern Ballet will be performing in the Great Hall from 1.30 to 2.15. Casey Kelleher will perform in the Great Hall from 2.30 to 3. Folk performers Peter Lembrick and um, John Petucci will be at the community center, and I think that's around 2 o'clock. And this is uh, sponsored by the Senior Center. Wildlife Encounters will be in the Great Hall from 3.30 to 4.30, and that is sponsored by the Children's Center. Fireworks will be fired off at 6 p.m., weather permitting, with a rain date of January 1 at 6 p.m. I would like to thank the following sponsors who helped make the fireworks and the events possible. Hunters Shop and Save, Black's Paper Store, Leone McDonald's and Roberts, the Windrifter Resorts, Taylor Homes, Khaled Gallery, Winnie Team, Avery Insurance, and Goodhue Boat Company. I do have one question um, in relation to this event. Um, I don't know the, what it will be going on down at the dockside parking lot. That is where a lot of people like to go watch the fireworks and um, are we going to have a special area? Are you going to be okay to have them? And can, will they have, will we have anybody down there? Last year there were some police. And we'll work with the, the agencies event. to see what we can have. Okay, and the last thing is we would like to put uh, flyers on the doors coming in in the front of the uh, Great Hall and at the back entry if that's okay with the board. Fine. Hey, are there any questions from the public? If not, a closed public hearing. Somebody like to make a motion? I'll make a motion to issue a temporary event permit to um, the Economic Development Committee to hold annual uh, last night Wolfboro in the Great Hall of Town Hall Community Center and Brewster Academy on December 31st, 2022 from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Second. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Another public hearing on Wednesday, December 7th, 2022, approximately 6.30 at the Great Hall Town Hall, 84 South Main Street, Wolfram, New Hampshire, for consideration of a temporary event permit for the New England Chapter Antique and Classic Boat Society to host a boat show, Wolfboro Docks, July 29th, 2023 from 6 a.m. to 3 p.m. Somebody here to talk to that? Good evening, board. I'm Bill Markison from the New England chapter at ACBS. Um, this is the annual boat show. This is actually our 49th annual boat show. Uh, we haven't held all of them here in Wolfboro. I think we've been here maybe 10 years or so. Uh, and we anticipate the same type of uh, arrangement that we've done the last several years. Okay, Any, uh, anybody else in the audience want to speak in favor or against? If not, I'll close the public hearing. Board, <clears throat> any questions? I have one. What time do you want the parking lot closed? Do you want it the night before, is it? Mid, uh, we found it works good to close it at midnight. Uh, and there's always a few stragglers parked in the morning, but uh, uh, the police department is very helpful in notifying people to get them cleared out. So, and I don't think I don't know if the, you answered. As I look at your chart, we have an electric boat on um, dock six, and I didn't know Barry's here. Do you usually move the electric boat, Barry? Yeah, you were, I saw you. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, they use dock uh, six, which is where the electric boat usually is um, moored. Can you move it to um, over by the, um, I guess it is the um, new dock, that drop down dock that will be built? It's uh, July 29th, which is a Saturday.
My only question. Okay. Has it been moved for you in the past? So it. Uh, well, it's it's a fair. Well, if, if there is any question, we can work it out with Barry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. They didn't move it last year, I don't think. Yeah. All right. I'll make a motion um, for an, a temporary event permit of the New England Chapter Antique and Classic Boat Society to host a boat show at the Wolfboro Town Docks on July 29, 2023. Parking lot to be cordoned off at midnight the night before. The um, event will go from 6 a.m. to 3 p.m., permit number 2023-5. Thank you. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Wolf Pro Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, December 7th, 2022, at approximately 6.30, the Great Hall Town Hall 84, South Main Street, Wolfboro, New Hampshire. Consideration of a temporary event permit for the, um, is this the New Hampshire Boat Museum or because it says New Boat Museum? Okay, that's what I thought. New Hampshire Boat Museum to host its 13th vintage race boat regatta at the Wolfboro Town Docks September 14th through the 16th, 2023, 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. Somebody here to speak to that. Yes, sir. Bill Markison, uh, on behalf of the New Hampshire Boat Museum and the Wolfboro Vintage Race Boat Regatta Organizing Committee. Um, again, this is our 13th iteration. Uh, we've been doing it every other September uh, since 2001. And uh, we anticipate running the same arrangement that we've done in the past, uh, where on uh, Friday and Saturday we run um, demonstration heats of vintage boats uh, during the daytime on both days and then on Thursday the day before starting about midday we set the parking lot up bring in a crane set the crane launch boats in the parking lot that sort of thing okay any questions do you what when do you want the parking lot closed on Thursday uh, Noon is when we uh, okay. when we've done it in the past. And do you put up signs in the, earlier so they know not to park there during? Yeah, you, we, yeah, we we um, as I recall, we put signs up like the night before, saying okay. it's going to be closing at noon, and okay. then around noon we start coming in to cordon it off and, and move the equipment and boats in. Okay, you're Good testing question. my memory here. I know. <laughs> okay, I'll close the public hearing. <clears throat> Somebody want to make a motion? Luke? Sure. Make the motion to issue a temporary event permit for the New Hampshire Boat Museum to host the 13th Vintage Race Boat Regatta at the Wolfboro Town Docks on September 14th through 16th, 2023, from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. I'll second. second. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, next on our agenda is our bulk vote. This is weekly manifest, November 18th, November 23rd, December 2nd. Intent to cut, and then property tax refunds and abatements. Somebody like to make a motion for those? I move that we accept the bulk vote. Second. A through C. A through C. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. New business. Water and sewer rates update. Jim? Yeah, so it's been a while since um, you've had an opportunity to meet with Underwood engineers regarding the um, water and sewer rates. We've held a, a couple of meetings this fall to discuss the rates um, and they have taken the information which we've provided them um, and built out a rate model going forward as to 
what it would cost to operate the water and sewer systems. And um, Keith is here to present. Okay, thank you, Jim. Um, thanks for having us. Again, my name is Keith Pratt, President of Underwood Engineers. Megan McCowan, uh, she's been the lead project engineer, has so actually done most of the work on the right model. On this one, as well as the ones we've done with you previously. So we've been involved with your raids for a bit now. Um, this is the last update we did starting a bit ago, um, probably about 12 months ago, and most recently has been um, refreshed, and now we're presenting it to you. I have a brief PowerPoint presentation. What you have um, is the slides as well as in, in the office a report that's in much more detail of what I'm going to summarize here. <clears throat> but I'll give you the overview and then we'll open it up for questions. Um, the previous models we have done go back to 2017 and updates every year or every other year. It's been it, um, up until 2021, 20, we've been doing them just about every year. So um, Wolfboro's been good about paying attention to the water and the sewer rate needs. There's a um, slide on the bottom of the slide that shows the recommendations from the previous work and, and the rate increases that have actually been implemented. Um, what we're pointing out here is the last two rate recommendation increases for 21 and 22 in the previous models were not implemented. I think everything prior to that had been. The goal of this one was to just review where the expenses are and project the town's revenue needs to support those for the next five years. That's really what we're doing here. We have a pretty good re view of the first two years. We make projections five years out just to give a sense of what might be happening, especially if you have large capital projects coming up. And then we make the rate recommendations. Background on the accounts, um, your water system and water account systems much greater than your sewer accounts. Um, your budgets are similar. Um, what's important about that is, you know, the sewer, the sewer department is supported by a much smaller group than the, and the water department and the water fund is. Your current rates are re reflected here. Um, you pay a monthly unit charge, and then you pay a consumption fee on top of that if you're a user. Um, the, 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 the rates include 1,500 <coughs> gallons per month sort of as a as, as part of the initial uh, the rate charge, and then when you exceed 1,500 gallons, then the consumption charge kicks in. There are seasonal rates and other miscellaneous charges as well. Those are all accounted for in the model, and your current rates um, are listed right here, both the monthly and the consumption charge for the 5 8 inch meter. We, this, isn't, this doesn't necessarily impact the rates, but we do look at this for you um, every time we do the rate model. We track the, cons the production and the consumption history. We trend it. Um, we do need to do that because we have to use the trends going back to project what we think the consumption is going forward so that if we're seeing a declining trend, we may not want to be assuming consumption will be growing. But we do, we do look at this for you, and in, on the water department side, um, we point out that about 30% of the water that you're producing is, is unaccounted for. That's a, we call non-revenue water. So you're producing it, but not selling it. So everything, only 70% of what you're making is, your, is, is what you're selling. The New England in, industry goal is about 15%, so it's a little bit on the higher side. On the, on the uh, wastewater end of things, we do the same thing. We look at what the treatment plant takes in and we compare it to what you're billing at the, at the meters. And the treatment plant is taking in almost twice as much water as you're billing. So we see about a 40, 47 to 50% of what we call I&I. &I. Do, do you have any past histories on it? Right here, um, there are some, this slide shows a trend, if, that's what, if that is what you're looking for, Linda. This is the, this is the water, and you can see the variations. These are in your charts. It's in, in, the, gra in, the, um, in the report. The, 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 the build line, this does have a laser on it, I think. But. It does not. OK. Um, the build line is shown in orange, and then the, that's the water you're billing, sum of all your accounts. And then the blue line is what your treatment plant is producing. So, so where, does, where does the I&I &I water come from? This is the water side, so the, this is the drinking water side. I'll talk about the I&I in a second. Okay. But this is, this is the water that leaves your treatment plant, goes into your pipes and your distribution system and gets sold. The water that's not being billed is usually lost. A lot of it's accounted for, like fire hydrant flushing um, 
or fire hydrant practice or, or even some of the chemicals, uh, some of the water that's being used at the treatment plant, but a lot of it's leaks. So what goes out in your distribution system may leak into the ground. So we'd look at it because if it starts to get excessive, we want you to chase it. I point it out because you are doing things. You have vintage water line projects. You have some other water line upgrades. This is why, because you're trying to chase some of these things. So I would like to see um, if we hit the 15%, what would our increase revenues be? Is that possible? It, it's not going to change your revenue side, but it will reduce your expense, expense side. side. Correct. Yeah. So, so if, if we... If did that? I mean, I just ran some numbers through, and I'm like, if we got that 15% off, could we save hundreds of thousands of dollars? Or I know there's flat, linear, fixed fees for operating everything, but I'm looking at it, I'm going, geez, even a, even between the I and I and that, if it came out to two or three hundred thousand dollars because we hit those efficiencies, that's something that we could use to tell the citizens in town by doing our projects, we're going to be saving all that money. Yeah, and yeah. I don't think that's well known by the public. No, no, and there is definitely a calculus you want to do when you look at these projects. You can estimate how much water you're going to reduce in terms of leaks and translate that into an offset. You know, it may not offset the cost, but it is an offset. And can you guys do that for us? Um, we do do that. We don't do it as part of the rate work, but it's usually done when we start looking at the cost effectiveness of the capital projects. Um, so the projects that we would be involved in, when we're not involved, I don't think, in any of your water system projects now, we are involved on the INI side, and I'll talk about that in a second, because we do look at that. We do look at the cost effectiveness, the return on the investment. And, I mean, generally, it's not going to pay for itself. It's good practice to keep your assets up, but there is an offset. Definitely. And the, on the wastewater side, it's the same thing. So we see what you're charging the users for in purple, and then the blue line above is what the treatment plant is seeing. So that represents that about 50% of the water is, is probably groundwater or surface water entering the system. Um, we are involved with the INI. There are projects that are being targeted to do that, and there were cost-effective estimates on what you would be saving. Again, they don't offset. They don't, Correct. but they do reduce, and they do show an offset. They don't, they don't, you know, they're not necessarily cost-effective. They're close, but you get an offset. For sure. But more importantly, I, we point these out because we need to know the trends on the consumption. They're showing in the water, we saw a flat consumption over the, the 10 years that we looked at here. So when we look forward five years, we're sort of assuming a flat, a flat proje projection, meaning we're not going to see a lot of growth in revenue because you're increasing sales. And in wastewater, we actually see a slight decrease. And it may be that some people are you know, doing some things on their properties to reduce um, consumption. And then the um, other one that's important on this is you have a, we, we've been involved with your groundwater disposal system. This is, the INI is important to reduce here because of the impact it has on your groundwater systems. So INI is, is really important in Wolfboro to, to reduce. Okay, some of the budget assumptions that we carried, we have your 2022 budget, approved budget. We used that as a baseline when we did the rate model. When we project five years, we often use a standard um, uh, inflation line item, line item, unless we're giving one that's unique. Sometimes um, we will be given a line item that says we know it's going to be this. Otherwise, we use 3%. In this case, we have used 3% and actually could be some of the other rate work in, in the state we're doing right now. We're using, they're asking us to use 5 or 6% because of the way costs are going up. But in this model, it's 3. Um, we have some other line items here, too. The ones that are most important in the rate model is that 3%, that's what we're carrying for five-year budget increases going forward each year. And then we have some capital outlay items that we are showing in the, in the uh, water end. We're showing 150 that's in the model. We do have a fire protection budget line for revenue of 324, so the general fund offsets some of the expenses on the water side to the tune of 324. And then we have new debt and capital projects identified in the model. So in the water, it's seasonal water line replacement, water treatment plant upgrades, the vintage water main upgrades, and um, some other water line projects. So these, these are built into the model. They're important on the water side because the users are paying for those. We have the same lists on the capital side, I mean on the sewer side, but those are general fund um, those are offset by the general fund, so they don't have as the impact on the rates for the sewer users. But they are listed in here. They are recognized and shown in the model, so you have a general fund offset 
that's been identified too, and I'll show you those in a second. These are the projects that we just talked about. They, it's about $11 million in sewer projects that are built into the model and about $4 million in water. And again, the sewer is offset by the general fund. The water is not. When you say the water line, the vintage water line, is that the one up north Main Street, or are you talking the one from Pickering Corner to the Smith River Bridge? Linda, I'm not exactly sure which one it is, but I can tell you it, we budgeted in there one point, no, half a million, uh, sorry, where is it? $0.7 million for it. So okay, it's, so it has to be the one from Pickering to Bridge and not the one going up North Main Street. Okay, okay. thank you. Yep. Um, this is the budget that we projected going forward on the Water Department. It's uh, modest over the next five years. You know, it does increase slightly. Um, there's some debt falling off, so sometimes you see it drop, but with 3% increases, it goes up slightly. So that's, those are the budget items we used in the water model. Rate calcs on the, on the wastewater side, there was a, a significant budget increase. This does include the capital items, so that we'll show you about the offsets, but the department uh, with the new debt is seeing some pretty large increases from 1.6 to 2.5 with, with the debt service and the capital projects. These are the general fund offsets. So these are built into the model. For the next five years, every year the general fund is offsetting the 324 for the water department. And these are the sewer department de debt and capital outlay offsets that are built into the, into the uh, model as well. So every, you know, under the historical approach in Wolfboro, everything on the wastewater side that is capital related is paid for by the general fund. And that's what those numbers are. Which translates into the budget that is actually supported by the users. So when you correct for all that, we see a 2020, we went back a little bit on this too, we see back in 2020, which was the last year you did a rate increase, your, your, the, the water users were supporting a budget of just over a million as the sewer department was as well. And then this shows you what, what's happening since, since the last rate increase. We're now up in our five-year projection on the water is about 1.5 million and the sewer is about 1.3 million. So we see a 27% increase in the six years on the sewer and just a slight increase in the six years with the, cap, with the additional capital. I only went back to 2022 with those calcs because that's where we are today. And then based on that, we, we, when, when we first started doing this about six months ago, these were the rate recommendations that we came up with. And one of the things that the Public Works Department wanted to do was say if we, because I will tell you right now, your, your water side of things is in fairly good shape. There's, there, there's, we missed two rate increases prior. We saw the 4% recommendation in 2023 to try to catch you up with that. But the rest of the recommendations for a 3% per year increase or a 2% per year increase was just to look at scenarios where additional capital costs, capital money could be generated to support capital projects. So these were to increase capital revenues to support more work than what was in the model, okay? So um, that's why you saw a couple scenarios back six months ago, we were looking at various ways to do that. The recommendation at the time was sought to, to you do the initial 4% and then a 3% thereafter each year, which would generate $340,000 more for capital for the next five years or about 60,000 a year. That's what that was. On the wastewater side, the, the, because there was a significant increase, we showed from now to, uh, to 2027 over the five or six years, it's about a 27% increase. So we are recommending a 9% increase initially. 2023, it catches us up a little bit on the ones we missed and gets us whole to meet your expenses. And 3% thereafter represents overall about a 22% increase to match just to get you close to where, or to get you to where you need to be um, to support the expenses in the projected budget. So this was more needed if you, if you agreed to the budget projections that we had suggested. Um, that's just a reminder that there's 175,000 capital outlay in the, in the sewer budget, but again, that comes from the general fund, so it doesn't impact the rates. We do calculate sample bills, what this means to the users. Um, if these rate recommendations are, are um, approved, 
And we show on the water end, this is calculated based on an average user in town. So we estimate, we take all the users in town, divide them by the number, uh, divided by the total consumption, and it, on average, a residential user uses just over 100 gallons a day. That's what you're billing. So if you plug 106 gallons a day into the, to your rate structure, the water user is paying $495 a year, and the wastewater user is paying $600 a year. If you use twice as much water, you're probably paying twice as much as that, but that's the average. Um, it's important to note if you ever look at the state averages, you have to be careful on apples to apples because the state uses a different number than 106. So if you see a higher number on a state average, it's probably potentially because they're using a higher flow. And then it shows the increases here going forward with the rate recommendations that are um, recommended. recommended. And uh, I, this was just, Megan provided this here as a water, was, it's approximately increasing about $17 a year, and the sewer about $54 in 2023 and about $21 a year thereafter if these rate recommendations were approved. So again, just to summarize the recommendations the, for the water, it was 4% um, in 2023 to sort of catch you up to what was missed, and then 3% annually to if, the, uh, if there's a desire to raise the additional 60,000 in capital revenue. We still continue to review the model every one or two years. Historically, you've been good about that. Um, I, I know some questions came up on the $750,000. That is our recommendation on what we say is a minimum you, you really want to keep in cash reserves, kind of like your savings account. So we, we keep that in mind. That's just, if you, if you just had an issue or an emergency, that's a good recommendation, three to six months of your operating expenses in reserves for emergency needs. On the wastewater side, again, increased rates 9% in 2023 and then 3% in 2024. This is to meet the department budget. This one's a little different. This is what you need to get, get to the, uh, support the expenses. And then reminder that we do, this does include an annual capital outlay at 175 that's going to the general fund. It's a little higher than what was previously um, supported. Um, and that's, that was by the department's request, about $50,000 more. That's why that says that, because historically it's been 125. And again, review the model every one to two years, and similarly about three to six months of reserves for emergencies. That's, that's the summary of, of the model and the recommendations that are in there. Um, Megan's ready if we have to look up any detail, because she knows it, um, but we'd certainly like to see if there's any questions. I just have one. Just on page three, um, it's, you have your estimates for 2022, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, and they're all the same, and I'm just wondering where you get those estimates from, how you calculate those. Or so that goes back to, and Megan, correct me if I'm wrong, but we're looking at these charts, right? So he's looking, I think he's looking, you're looking at table, uh, table two? Yeah, I'm looking at table two on page three. Those are the uh, production numbers that we are using to calculate the revenues in the model, which what I said was kind of flat. We didn't assume they were growing. They okay. didn't assume they were de declining. Okay. So what that says is you're selling that much water about those years, that's the assumption. Wouldn't, don't, do we, should we assume that our water and sewer consumption will go up? You can, but it would, our rate recommendations might go down, and if you don't realize that increase because the history says you haven't seen it, then you might be, be upside down. Upside down. I've had, Laconia is actually as, asking us to use a decreasing consumption, so we're seeing that they're projecting their consumption will go down, so their revenues would go down, and the rates were set accordingly. And that's conservation, partly, you know. In my understanding, the 750000 is not calculated in the rate. You didn't look no. to see how much cash we had and then to make up that difference. We would do it if we were given the, like the, if we had the data that shows where you stood today for the finance, you know, with your cash reserves, mm -hmm. we can project it. Right. So all you, all, in the model, all we need to do is know that starting number, and we can calculate the ending number. But it would be pretty flat in our case because we're trying to show our revenues to meet our expenses. 
Okay, and my understanding is one of the ways that you keep getting the revenue you need is to put a certain amount in the fixed costs and a certain amount in the uh, the gallon costs. So yeah. that gives you some stability then yeah. to have your water rate go up and down. That's right. That's why if you don't use any water but you're connected to the system, you're still getting a monthly charge. I sent in all my questions earlier. Any other questions from the board? Thank you. Any questions, Jim? You got any? No. Jim, when are we going to act on this? So that's, that's the board's discretion. I, I think we probably should take a little bit of time to process it. I mean, there's a lot of information here. Um, obviously, it's kind of a challenging time frame. We're a little bit behind compared to where we would like to traditionally deliver this, um, I guess the question is, when do you think the best time to implement the, the uh, increases would be for the project? Um, did we assume that these would be impacted starting in January? That's how the model... Yeah. So, so, yeah. so, so what Megan's telling me is that the model assumed they would be uh, starting in January. Now, so the longer we wait, time frame. The, the, yeah. then that puts us more behind. I can tell you just, you know, a couple months isn't going to hurt anything. We don't have to do this before Christmas, but, but you know, it would be something I think you'd want to look at hard by spring at the latest. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think it would make sense to discuss, you know, process this stuff, um, have it as an agenda item to discuss at the next meeting for a plan for implementation. Yeah, because whatever we implement it, whatever month, the, you don't see it in the bill until the next until month. The next, so the longer we quarter. put it down, the more we're going to be behind the April. That's the only reason well, I brought it up. I think that probably if we put it on next, the next, next meeting agenda, and I, I think, you know, at the end of the weeks. first quarter would be a good time to implement it. And one, th one of the things nice is we did for a few years ago, three or four years, switch from quarterly billing to monthly billing. Correct. So it's very easy now to not, you know, if a lot of communities are still in quarterly bills. If you make a rate increase, it could be three or four months before you actually see, or more before you actually see that revenue. Yeah. But you'd see it yeah. within a month or two. We're doing month. monthly now. In a month, yeah, we yeah. do monthly. Yeah. We're doing monthly now. You're yep. doing monthly mm -hmm. billing yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. Which is good. So just like your cable bill and your electric yeah. bill. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You get hit monthly. Okay. okay. Are we all Thank set? Thank you. Yep. yep. Thank you. Okay, next on our agenda is Conservation Commission easement, Whiteface Mountain. That's for the parking lot. So um, Lenore asked me to speak to this. She's, she's not available this evening. Um, basically what this is doing is coming in front of you, um, requesting the Board of Selectmen to authorize the chairman to sign off on the document because it involves the usage of LCHIP funds. Um, the result of the use of LCHIP funds requires the board to sign, the chair to sign and, and make a motion to that and um, they will be good to go with their LCHIP. Okay, would somebody like to make a motion to that effect? Jim said basically it's to allow the chair to sign the uh, conservation easement on the Meisner property, the Whiteface Mountain. That's a parking lot on Browns Ridge Road. Move to authorize Dave Seneca as chairman to sign the conservation easement deed for the Meisner property at the base of Whiteface Mountain, granting an easement from the town of Wolfboro to the Lakes Region Conservation Trust as per voter approval from March of 2022, Warren Article Number 20. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, next on the agenda is the revised Huggins Hospital SALT MOU. So we took the information back. Um, we are working on securing an easement going forward. Uh, however, in the interim, we would like to renew the one-year uh, MOU, and the MOU coming to you next year will have easement language that defines how that has been captured and and what that will look like for a multi-year um, MOU. 
And we're going to do that, get it that easement, and we're going to give that to New Hampshire DOT because it will go with the Route 28 South project? Correct. Perfect. Then I'll make a motion. Um, I move to authorize the Board of Selectmen to sign a one-year agreement for a SALT MOU with Huggins Hospital to, to expire in 2023. Second. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, okay, next on our agenda is ad space for Pop Whalen Ice Arena. Uh, so I believe we have some representation here this evening uh, from the Friends of Pop Whalen. Uh, if you recall, the Friends of Pop Whalen put together a business plan uh, for the operations of the arena. Uh, they're here tonight to speak to you regarding the rates and what they have for a recommendation based on the build business plan that they've built. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so good evening, um, Victor Jerome with the Friends of Pop Whalen. Uh, first, wanted to thank you guys for having us back here again. Um, good news is the project's on schedule. We're still looking to open January 3rd. Um, I gave you all a uh, invite. It's already, I think, made it out on social media and stuff, but on uh, next Wednesday, we're going to do an open house, so we'll do a... Uh, a private one for donors from 4.30 to 6.30, 6.30 to 8.30 will be set up for the public to come in and, and hopefully friends, families, kids, uh, anyone <clears throat> that would like to check it out in preparation for the January 3rd start would really appreciate uh, them showing up. So uh, today, what I have in front of you, you had approved for us prior um, to sell Dasher Board's uh, advertisement inside the rink. And last year we set this up to, um, to sell those at 750. And part of the fundraising that we did, we pushed this more towards the latter end of the project. So we really didn't get active at doing this. And in the, in the process, I started to do some assessment. So on page three, uh, of your attachment, I I went out and did a summary of of a bunch of five of the local rinks in our area in our region, and and got the pricing for their bads uh, <clears throat> board advertisements, any banners that they sell, zambonis, center ice, all that stuff. So uh, what it looks like is our our board advertising when we went to 750 was still about half of what anyone else was doing. Um, now there's some nifty other pricing plans. If you, it's 1400, some are 12, but if you buy it for three years, it becomes a thousand. So my recommendation is um, to do the board advertisements, which is a three by eight uh, banner for a thousand dollars each for a three year term. And then in addition to that, um, what we found as the ring got built, <clears throat> the, um, the physical wall, the building's exterior walls are about five feet taller, which created some, ad, some banner spacing, which you find at most of the other rinks around. So we thought that instead of splitting up and doing the small ads on the boards, we'd just sell the big ads on the boards and the smaller half size, the three by fours, it, uh, three by fours or three by fives would be the standard, and those would be 750 each. So that's our request: is that we're just authorized to sell those and and get that out to the uh, public and get the inside going. So it's it's just incremental additional revenue to offset the operating costs is essentially where we would. What's that's our recommendation.
So we'll need a motion. Yep. Do you want me to do one? I'll make, yeah. I'll make a motion that our banner ads, which is 36 inches by 48 inches for $750 uh, per year. Um, and it says a three year term and the dashboard ads 32 by 96, $1,000 for one year and a three year term. Second. What, what about the Zamboni? The Zamboni was previously approved by okay. you, so the Zamboni and the center ice and neutral ice, those have all been sold. Okay. So they're, oh, good. we've sold out all that. That advertising is all done. Okay, is there a second? Mm -hmm. Luke? All those in favor? <clears throat> Aye. Aye. Um, I'm going to abstain. My wife's on there as yeah. one of the makers there, so... <laughs> Um, the last piece was in doing the assessment, and I and I uh, I talked to Bo, and Bo and Christine have gotten together on this. Um, the town does, didn't. I did an assessment, and I was kind of collecting things as I was going through the other local rinks. <clears throat> the town also, Parks and Rec also does their own assessment of some other things to set the uh, annual rates, but the one normal operating fee that was off was the stick and puck uh, most of the adjoining rinks so pop whalen is six dollars per visit most of the adjoining rinks are 10 to 15 um, the municipal rinks average um, 8 to 10 so i'm recommending it's it's a two dollar change but i'm recommending that you know we, we go from six to eight on the stick practice essentially is the other request and that's um, well, i think that's something you need to talk to uh christine and them about and then bring it back to us okay that's a change that they need to make within them within the department not with us that's fine at least i don't think okay yeah that Anybody was the else only... want to weigh in on that one i think it's up to christine and them to make make that decision not us I don't, don't so you're comfortable if we approve it? I'll mm -hmm. make the motion that we change okay. stick practice to $8. Second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Victor. See you next week. <clears throat> okay. IT service agreement, phone service agreement. Casey Sears, she'll speak on behalf of this. I'm Kathy Carpentier, Finance Director. Um, I'm here to ask you to sign a one-year um, service agreement and phone service agreement with Block 5, who's current, uh, currently managing our IT and phone systems. Um, their uh, service prices have not gone up. The prices have because uh, licenses have gone up and units have gone up. So there's definitely increases, but their hourly um, rates that they charge us have not. Um, and this has been reviewed by members of our internal IT committee. Okay. <laughs> Any questions? Oh, and I guess the motion would be to, um, if, if you approve, to have the town manager sign these both these agreements. Move to waive the bidding requirements and authorize the town manager to sign the managed IT services agreement and the phone services agreement with Block 5 as recommended by the finance director. Second. Okay, any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Next, Pop Whalen Locker Room MOU with Governor Wentworth Frequent School District. Okay, so there's been some back and forth regarding the MOU agreement with the um, school district uh, for usage of the locker rooms at Pop Whalen um, really boils down to um, four items that we need to address. Um, the, the first item is on page two, um, 5A, licensee shall not be responsible if licensors, employees, last access of the locker rooms, or if Pop Whalen Ice Arena is not kept properly secure. Um, we think that this could be problematic, um, depending on 
the operations of the arena. There's, there's going to be a need for um, staff to be able to go into those rooms at various times. Um, for example, if a child were to leave a backpack in there, you know, it would be prudent for us to unlock their locker room to allow the kid to get the backpack. Um, and then the, the question becomes, does that nullify, um, make us liable for being the last one in there? Um, that came to us from legal. Um, and that, that I think we can work through. I, I don't see a lot of issues with that. Um, the second is on 5B. The cameras, at this point, there are no cameras in that hallway, um, and right now we do not have the budget to be able to put cameras in there. So, so that's a problem. And then under Section 6, the last line, both licensee and licensor shall have keys. Um, no real issue here other than the fact that, you know, we, we need to the school district to understand that we own the facility, therefore, again, we may need to get into those locker rooms and this kind of ties back into the operations of the facility. And I think we just need to clean up those, those items. Um, and then the last one is the duration of the agreement shall be no less than 40 years. The problem that I see with that is, um, you know, this is a brand new arena. This is a brand new MOU. Um, I'd rather see this be a two year type of an agreement that we have the ability to renew with them because we're going to find some operational um, challenges associated with this MOU. Um, and I think we need to be able to work with them, the school district, to say, you know, we, we've got a little few tweaks here based on n now how we understand the building operates and, and some of the, the needs associated with it. So th those are the, the takeaways on this. Um, any input from the board? Yeah, I see this as being tied into a donation of $250,000 for the locker rooms. And I think that 40 years is, if we're going to put that kind of money in, or we're going to ask the voters to put that kind of money in, we need to make sure that we have an agreement for the 40 years. If not, they're not going to buy a two-year and put a warrant article out for $250,000. So... I think that's the issue, whether there's some wording up above in which we talk about reviewing the operations at a certain time, I, I would go for that. But I, I think if you remove the 40, they, they're not going to put the Warren article out. I'm just curious where the $250,000 came from. Who, how did they come up with that number? Was that just a volunteer donation? That the Friends of Pop looked at what it would cost to build those two locker rooms, and it was 250000 It was 125000 for each. And so they asked for if the high school is going to have the locker room as theirs, in other words, purchase it, they're paying the cost to build it. Victor, you may want to chime in here. Yes, so Linda's going down the right path. So originally when this was put together, even the original budget, that came to the town there were two lines there's the there were the requirements the insulation the roof those sort of dehumidification all that stuff was on the town's docket the expansion was part of you know we did a needs assessment we got with Kings Kingswood Brewster and figured out what we needed for space so that's what created the 10,000 square foot addition essentially and when you take the budget, <clears throat> when that budget broke down, it was $2.7 million, which is where the Friends of Pop Whalen number. We said, look, Friends of Pop Whalen is responsible for 2.7. The town is responsible for 4.2. That's how we divided it. And then we simply just took the square footage and said Brewster's locker rooms are 1,000 square feet. This is the cost per square foot. So that's the 250,000, same with Kingswood, their lockers are the same. So they're getting them, <clears throat> unfortunately we had given Kingswood and Brewster their numbers before inflation hit. <laughs> so, you know, it probably should have been 270,000 if you bring it forward to today. But at the time when we negotiated these deals, so 
the, the whole purpose of that money, the 250000 is for them, they're acquiring. We built space specific to their needs for them, and the cost to do that was 250000 That's essentially how we got there uh, for both Brewster and Kingswood. So the MOUs, they're really, in their perception, they're buying these for the life of the building. You know, I, I hadn't seen that yet and knew that there was a 40-year timeline, but the discussions have been that they're essentially, they own it, they need to maintain it and keep it up to par. Um, but that was their responsibility, was they were, they were essentially buying that space. Now, was Brewster and um, Kingswood, are they still online to do this? <clears throat> well, we have the MOU from Kingswood. We've yet to get back comments from Brewster, so, um, you know, which, um, you know, we had our discussion with them that, you know, was going down the same exact path, um, and it's not there right now. So, um, Brewster, I think, Brewster, the last comment we had is they're waiting for a, a donor that will pay their part, and then they'll do the MOU, and then it will be done. Um, so that's... That's where Brewster is with it currently. Well, the way I read number one as well, though, is that they're paying $250,000 for two locker rooms. Yes, a boys and a girls and a shower. Okay, well, I read it as $250,000 for two locker rooms. Is it, that correct or incorrect? That's the 1,000 square feet, yes. Okay. It's one pair of, it's, it's a boys and girls varsity with a shared um, bathroom facility, shower facility. So. Okay. All right. Good. Any other questions for Victor? Linda? No, I'm, I'm fine. So if you're good, I'll, I can continue to work with the school district yep. on these few operational items and, and see if we can get um, some language captured in here that we may be able to revisit um, yeah, to tweak operation. We operational may have needs. to get into those locker rooms for electrical issues or other things. But I think in here it Water talks. Lines, uh, it talks about. It does, it, but it, yeah. access and yep. it does allow for all that. And okay. We continued then. Okay, discussion of warrant articles. This will take a few minutes. Okay, so warrant articles. Um, we, we've made a lot of progress over the past week. Casey's going to come up because she'll be able to hopefully answer some questions that I may not be able to. Um, in addition, um, the department heads will be here to speak as needed um, relative to warrant articles. Uh, you have a new um, presentation in front of you um, that was freshened up as of this afternoon. Um, on the uh, first page of that, um, this lays out all of the warrant articles and where those warrant articles will impact, um, whether it's a general fund, whether it's a bond, uh, water, sewer, uh, electric, etc. Um, so this is just a summary of those. Uh, the next slide is just a, a zoom in of that particular slide that gives you a, a closer view of what we're looking at. Oh, thank you. Um, and, and this boils down to, we essentially have three bonds. Um, two of them will go to the bond bank for, one of them will be a state revolving loan fund, um, and then we've got uh, general fund cash. We're looking at uh, 1.5 million. Sewer fund cash, we're looking at 1.3 million. Uh, water fund cash, 126,000. Electric fund, 170,000. Capital reserve, uh, calculations, um, are run through as well. So 
all in with all of the warrant articles, um, it's a dollar seventeen on the tax rate um, for a total of um, twenty eight million nine hundred and eleven thousand dollars. So with that said, um, we have to consider uh, getting notices out for the bond hearings at this point. Um, the last day to notice the bond hearing would be January 10th, so the last day to hold the bond hearing, January 17th. We're recommending that we notice in the local paper um, on or before December 29th, and we hold the bond hearing on January 12th at 6 p.m. Uh, with an inclement weather date of January 17th, and our deliberative session would be scheduled for February 7th. Uh, do those dates work for this body? My only comment is when we get down there, if we run, if for any reason we have to go to the 17th, if there's any change in a bonded warrant article, we wouldn't have a chance to hold another hearing. So, I mean, we, we can run them earlier. Um, it just it gets tight with the, the budget committee schedule and whatnot, but we can, we can look at running them. I, that's week my earlier. only concern that, you know, we get in and every once in a while we. We get there and somebody makes a comment. I, you know, I don't, I just would be concerned to leave it to the last minute. Yep, understood. Uh, so I'll, we'll look at potentially being able to move it a week earlier. So the first one is the public safety building. Uh, I'll go read the article and then I'll give you a little bit of background information as to where we're at. Um, we have representatives from the police and fire department here to speak if you have any specific questions. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $12 million for the purpose of structural replacement expansion and renovation and equipment replacement for the public safety building. Further to authorize the issuance of not more than $12 million in bonds or notes for this purpose in accordance with the provisions of RSA 33, the Municipal Finance Act, and to further authorize the Board of Selectmen to issue, negotiate, sell, and deliver such bonds or notes and to determine the rate of interest thereon and the maturity and other terms thereof and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to obtain, apply for, obtain, and accept federal, state, and or other aid grants, donations, if any, which may be available for said project and that may reduce the amount uh, to bond and to comply with all laws applicable to said project and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to take any action, any other actions or pass any other votes relative thereto. Uh, here is a conceptual drawing of what we have for a, uh, the updated space needs and programming at this time. Uh, this lays out the first floor. There is, um, we've worked with all agencies involved. This provides good flow. Um, for all departments, it provides security, um, and, and it seems like it works on the site. Uh, the, the construction will still be challenging for staging of materials and equipment. Uh, we do have um, interviews scheduled next week with the construction managers, which we hope to immediately award um, the contract to and get moving so we can get a guaranteed maximum price uh, for deliberative session, and we're anticipating the 12 million uh, to hopefully come down a little bit. Second floor, uh, very similar. Um, the the flow here works very well for all agencies involved. It provides for growth in the future. Um, the the concept here is the first thing they will do is build the apparatus bay. Um, once that's built, the fire apparatus will move in. Uh, next phase would be to tear down the existing apparatus bay, which is in the middle of this drawing. They would tear that down, build the new two-story structure, and then they would uh, update and upgrade the uh, existing administrative building. Um, we, we reviewed the concept of bonds. We reviewed a 20-year and a 30-year bond. Um, the the general consensus between Casey and myself are uh, a 20 year bond is more prudent to go with. Um, we're paying a lot of interest in a 30 year bond uh, and not seeing a whole lot of benefit um, based on the, 
the savings to the taxpayer on this. Um, so that basically sums up where we're at with the public safety building. Again, plan is to uh, interview construction managers next week. Uh, from that point, be able to get a contract in place. They'll immediately start working on the space needs and programming to determine what the guaranteed maximum price is. Um, it most likely won't be ready in advance of the uh, bond hearing, but it, it will be ready in advance of the deliberative session, which hopefully will allow us to uh, reduce the amount being asked for. Any questions? So we'll take this one back up at the bond hearing then. Okay, uh, next project is uh, Smith River, or South Main Street, Center Street to the Smith River Bridge. This is a uh, state revolving loan fund. Um, and the article reads, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $2 million for the purpose of replacing vintage water mains on the South Main Street, on South Main Street from Center Street to the Smith River Bridge. Funds shall be utilized for engineering fees and water line replacement. The amount of $1,690,000 shall be funded from the Water Enterprise Fund. This expenditure will, shall not result in any increase in the tax rate. Further to authorize the Board of Selectmen, or further to authorize the issuance of $1,690,000 in bonds or notes for this project in accordance with provisions of RSA 33, the Municipal Finance Act, and to further authorize the Board of Selectmen to negotiate, sell, and deliver such bonds or notes, and to determine the rate of interest thereon and maturity and other terms thereof, and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to participate in the State Revolving Loan Fund SRLF RSA 48614 established for this purpose, and to allow the Board of Selectmen to accept such monies as become available from the federal and state governments and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to take any other or pass any other vote relative thereto and to authorize the town manager to sign any relating documents. Uh, so this basically takes the Complete Streets project which initially had water, sewer, and stormwater and it backs it down to simply a uh, water line replacement which was recommended by the engineer um, because they don't believe that this complete streets project could be done in a single season. Um, they're going to have to put in uh, temporary water lines. Um, this is going to be a big project. So he, we believe that it's best to do this in one year, one part of the project, and then go forward with the sewer and the stormwater at a later time. Additionally, um, we have received $310,000 in an American Rescue Act grant should this uh, project pass. Any questions short of that, we will um, revisit that at the, at the uh, bond hearing. My only question is, do you have a time of year so the, the voters know that we aren't going to do it in the middle of the summer? So if you're going to do it in the spring or in the fall, that we make sure that we inform them that? If I remember correctly, that was what Stantec was recommending, was spring and fall um, for that project. And Steve Randall shaking his head yes. Okay. So we're in agreement that it's a spring and fall project. Yep. <coughs> so we'll um, move this to the bond hearing. Um, next one is the Libby Museum. Um, so this is the original language we had. I'm not going to read through this language um, because the I, I want to go through the um, background information and then I'll read the article after the fact. So after our last meeting, um, we discussed uh, the Bowen Corporation estimate and we discussed the Cobb Hill estimate and the differences thereof. Um, here you'll see the Cobb Hill estimate for 3087000 uh, You'll see Alba Architects providing us an estimate of the soft costs of $311,000. And you'll see a letter from Bowen Corp of $4.2 million 
um, with uh, estimated budget if we were to go in the fall of 2023 um, of 4.7 million. I have reached out to um, Alba Architects. They've been in contact with Cobb Hill about providing us a guaranteed maximum price based on uh, the letter that they gave us on June 28th, sorry, which is in this picture. Um, as you can see, these are the estimates, again, uh, side by each, um, provided by Cobb Hill and uh, Bowen, analyzed by Alba Architects, and again, the Alba Architects uh, soft cost numbers. So going forward, uh, at this point, um, known items, Cobb Hill estimate, $3,087,701. Soft costs, 311000 for a total base <coughs> on the estimate of uh, $3,398,701. Uh, Bowen Court provided us an estimate of $22,000 for uh, a parking lot. And one of the big concerns we've had is the contingency was not enough. So if you look at the bottom right of the screen, you'll see the Bowen contingency versus the Alba contingency, which shows a $270,000 differential. So I put that $270,000 in as uh, an increase to the contingencies. Um, so the total cost of this project coming forward would um, a minimum bond amount of $1,180,711. Now this is again pending confirmation from Cobb Hill um, based on their estimate that they provided us in June. So what should we put together for a warrant article? Um, I'm recommending that we, we look at the $4 million number for the bond hearing notices and hopefully we will be able to ring that back um, before the deliberative session if um, Cobb Hill can provide us an updated estimate. So the article reads, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $4 million for the purpose of structural repairs, equipment replacement, expansion, and renovation of the Libby Museum with $310,000 from previously established Libby Museum expansion and renovation capital reserve fund, and further to authorize the issuance of issuance of not more than one million four hundred and 90,000 in bonds or notes for this purpose in accordance with the provisions of RSA 33, the Municipal Finance Act, and to further authorize the Board of Selectmen to accept at least $2.2 million donations from the Friends of the Libby Museum for this purpose. Also to, further, also to further authorize the Board of Selectmen to issue, negotiate, and sell, and deliver such bonds or notes and to determine the rate of interest thereon and the maturity and other items thereof, and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to apply for and obtain federal, except federal, state, and other aid grants and donations, if any, which may be available for said project and that may reduce the amount to bond and to comply with all laws applicable to said project and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to take any action or to pass any other vote thereto. A um, couple of items in this. Um, this does include the moving and the uh, storage of the artifacts. Um, the ALBA estimate was 60000 which was part of the soft costs. The estimate provided by um, the consultant was $38,000. So we, we've got some solid numbers there. Um, I can try to answer any other questions which you may have. Uh, the other thing that I think we really should consider with this project um, is a clerk of the works. I just have one comment. On our sheets, you have um, one that has the, um, the amount that we would bond at 944800 I think this one is right. Maybe we should say... C-1, so we don't mix them up. Yep. Agreed. 
So if you're okay, we'll move this to the bond hearing. Yep. Oh, um, and again, we did discuss 20 versus 30 year. Um, we're recommending the 20 year bond because it's a 30 year, the interest rates are just, it, we're paying too much in interest going forward. So does the 70-30 split not exist anymore? That's what I gleaned from our last meeting, because that group said they were only going to contribute the 2.2. That's what my understanding was. And my, under my feeling is that we have 2.2 million. That's a significant amount of, the donation, of a donation that we should put it out to the voters. This is a voter's choice. They've got to sell it. We're not selling it. I'd be happier with the 1.2 million from us and to um, have them personally guarantee the extra just like the Friends of Pop Whalen did. Understood. Uh, so the next article is the operating budget. We're obviously still working through that. Um, next item is the municipal electric vote. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $170,000 for the purpose of replacing the municipal electric vote. The amount of $170,000 shall be funded from the Electric Enterprise Fund. This expenditure shall not result in any tax rate increase. This appropriation is non-lapsing pursuant <coughs> to RSA 32.7, Roman numeral 6, and shall lapse on December 31, 2024, or upon completion of this project, whichever occurs first. Barry's here to speak on behalf of this. I know you had some questions for him regarding the specifics of the boat. Um, we've got the PowerPoint presentation that he's provided us, and you should be able to ask him any questions that he will be able to provide you answers for. Thank you, Jim. Barry Muccio, Wolf Bar Electric Department. <coughs> I know you folks want some more detail in the, uh, in the initial request, which I've put together. This is the existing boat. It, it really is just a sport utility style fishing boat. Um, it is at this time undersized for what we do with it as far as loading it with transformers. It really can't handle that capacity. It is the primary transportation in, uh, for personnel and equipment to the nine islands we serve, 126 customers. It's used for construction, maintenance, emergency response, trouble calls, et cetera. It'll be 20, 20 plus years old when we received the new one. It was purchased in 03, has 630 hours. Again, the capacity is only 1,500 pounds. Um, the maintenance cost year to date is 16,860. Um, and that's 80% of the purchase price. So the bottom line is a boat is a hole in the water, but we're obligated to, uh, to continue serving and maintaining those customers out there. Over this past summer, we did sustain some damages. I think you all know about that down here at the town docks, busy summer. Uh, some photos of that. We got an appraisal from our insurance company. It was a uh, little over $5,300. They valued the boat at 5,400. So they did claim the boat and declare it as a total loss. This is a style of boat here, a couple examples of what we're looking for moving forward. Something in the 24-foot range that has a uh, uh, landing vessel style bow, has a crane where we can pick up transformers, transport them out there without needing to, uh, to uh, hire barge, et cetera, to do some of that heavy work that needs to be done occasionally out there. This is just another example of an alternate manufacturer. Would the Municipal Electric Department mind if Fire and Rescue used it in a pinch? Um, we share, but I mean, they have a boat currently. Many times when it's rough, we actually bum a ride with these guys because their boat, like this one, is a little better equipped for the weather. So. We'll certainly work back and forth. Like yeah, we, I see the I see the months in with that um, with the way you have the launch on the front, and I can see that being advantageous to the fire department in, in an emergency too. 
as we always have, would certainly be willing to to share equipment and, Our, and we vice versa. Have always <coughs> made an effort to assist other town departments, especially this year when the electric boat was hit. Um, the issue for us is we need that boat available 24 7, 365. So we provide an operator to run. With the idea that we can still respond if we have to leave them there and come back and get them later, um, we've been able to make that work. Uh, you know, uh, to the point of both sharing a boat, we would have to. Well, not well, not well, sharing. I, I think what Brian's, if I can yeah. Yeah, not clarify, sharing. He, he's saying. With the boat we're proposing, perhaps you folks would have some use for that. And it's certainly like possible. I said, you know, I see the front landing part of that. And if you needed to, you know, get into a dock, into the shore quick, and get somebody off, that's much easier than with a, a standard boat. Very, very possible. So it'd be nice for the boat to have dual use. It's, it's an expensive piece of equipment. You would use it most of the time, and. Are you proposing that perhaps uh, some funding this from the general fund is uh, transpiring here, Brian? Is that what, Brian, is that what you're headed? I'm not saying that. <laughs> Just saying that it would be nice. Well, be careful. Be careful what you ask for. Yeah. We can be careful, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> Great idea. Yeah, 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 we can make that happen. But no, I mean, I, we've always I, shared, uh, what, you know, whatever needs to be done. So I mean, I don't see that. My only, my only thing is, uh, I do know Munson. That that, that company actually makes a very high quality vote. Uh, and those boats hold their value very well. Some of the other brands, not so much in landing crafts. That Munson may take a while to get, but it, it may be worth waiting for that boat. I've been on a few of them. They are, they're, they're the top of the line. Uh, and also, it says here, you know, 24 to 29 feet. My only question would be to keep it small, you know, as small as useful, usefully possible, because obviously if we're with 29 foot boat in that slip, it's good. It's going to pretty much alleviate any other boats from parking on dock. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, that happened to be the range that they okay. make them in. I would certainly go with it with the something in a 24 or even if they made a 22. Uh, 24 is probably the right size yeah. with transformers. Mm -hmm. Again, these are these are a couple of companies we reached out to. Um, so w it'll be a formal bid. We'll, we'll offer this up to, we'll look at several manufacturers when we actually put it out there. But um, the Munson act actually, if you go to the next slide, or Jim, maybe we already passed it. I don't know. Here we go. Yeah, this, this is a Munson that New Hampshire Electric Co-op's uh, Meredith District uses currently. And you can see how it's equipped there. That would be very similar to... To our usage, they, they keep a transformer wire and everything all stocked on it with their tools. It says yep. this comes with the trailer. So that price that we're asking for is motor, trailer. So yep. I do know that you have some power out on islands on Lake Wentworth. We so, do, yeah. So you that's... could conceivably move it over there if you needed to. Yeah, like we do now if yep. we have to, yeah. Watch okay. out for the rocks. Yeah, right. That's <laughs> we sort of know the route now. Friendly yeah. lake. Um, I see that what you have there, the equipment is in the boat. Is there going to be a way to secure your equipment? It's going to be kept down at the town docks. Yeah, we because they they take theirs out of the water and secure it inside. We're probably not going to outfit ours. Okay. To have everything on it all the time, okay. just not feasible. Okay. Barry, question: Would you? Where you park your boat now down there, obviously where it got hit and stuff like that, would you consider moving that further in on the dock so these other you know, weekend boats aren't you know, going by it so much? I'm open for suggestions after this summer. I mean, <laughs> the, the, kind of the reason I'm asking. You know, whatever we like, could do. I, is further down this way going to be safer? I, 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 I don't know. I think you're going to have less boats going by you if you're in near the, the seawall there and stuff. And the other mm -hmm. thing, too, wouldn't it make it easier for you to, if you're bringing material down, and your truck's there to set it on the dock, then the crane on the boat can pick it up, put it right in the boat, rather than run it all the way out on the dock and stuff. Um, so. I, I agree. And again, I'm open for suggestions yeah. that uh, I, I certainly wouldn't want a new boat getting creamed out there uh, like we did went through this summer. So. Now the old one would go under the bridge. This one won't. This proposed new one won't. No, no. So 
So again, this would be paid for by the electric department, uh, unrestricted fund balance. It wouldn't have an effect on the, the tax rate. It wouldn't have an effect on the electric rate either because these, are, these projects are built into our, uh, our current rate structure. So I would entertain any questions if you have any. No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Would Well, uh, I think it, it is, said in here that it included it a trailer. It is listed in there. It, it, yeah, it's right not, here. Not, not you probably need to edit the mo I would say motion. Add so it we could do that. And, yeah. and is there any equipment? Is it just boat and trailer or boat, trailer, and equipment? Well, I mean, you, you break it down. We don't, we don't typically name off every piece of equipment on, like, our trucks and stuff when we buy them. But there would be, like... The crane structure, I guess. Uh, I, I don't know. Um, I think if I'd you did it, boat, trailer, and equipment, you've taken care of anything, everything. I think we can do that, Jim. Is yep, got yeah. it noted. All right. Thank you. So, question for the board. Um, does the board want to vote on this article at this point? Or do you want to schedule another meeting to um, vote on these articles? You want to do it when we do the rest of the warrant articles after the bonding hearing? We can't. We, we've got to. We've got to push them onto the budget committee. Didn't we I think. Okay. I think we can do it at the next meeting. Oh no, we can't. No. When no. is the budget committee? They moved it. What are they doing? The warrant articles. <laughs> Seven. So we could do it at we the next meeting. Uh, next meeting. Okay. Have a list of them and just go down and. Okay. We wouldn't have to read them all, just say yes or no. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So the next one is the mini excavator. Um, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $130,000 for the pur purpose of purchasing a mini excavator. The amount shall be 78,000 shall be funded from the general fund. The amount of 26,000 shall be funded from the water enterprise fund and the amount of 26,000 shall be funded from the sewer enterprise fund. This appropriation is non lapsing pursuant to RSA 327 Roman and numeral six and shall lapse on December 31st, 2024 upon completion of the project, whichever occurs first. Uh, there were some questions about the usage. We were able to get some ballpark numbers. Um, we weren't able to get exact, but this spreadsheet uh, kind of outlines what the usage of a mini excavator rental has been since 2020. Uh, the, the, the challenge here is some of it was uh, tapped to warrant article money. Some of it was tapped to road monies. Um, so it, it was it was a real challenge to be able to get some of this. But we believe that we have captured it. Um, any specific questions to the project, Steve Randall or Rod Dempsey are here. They may be able to answer. None? Easy. Okay. Sewer pump station upgrades. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $600,000 for the purpose of paying for increased costs of equipment, uh, engineering equipment, construction and inspections of the Laner and Mill Street sewer pump stations. This appropriation is non-lapsing pursuant to RSA 327 Roman numeral six and shall lapse on December 31st, 2024 upon completion of the project, whichever occurs first. Um, we got some late breaking news yesterday afternoon. Um, we will be receiving um, state aid grant uh, over the next five years from the RIB project. Um, that's anticipated uh, to um, be $648,000. So we could actually, if the board so desired, and if the uh, governor and council approve this on the 21st, um, this project, we could utilize those monies for it, um, and that would um, not be any tax rate impact. Um, Casey, myself, and Mr. Ford, 
met yesterday, um, discussed this. We've we've balanced out the books on the RIB site, and we have um, Laner Street uh, right now. The Laner Street project, um, we're looking at a deficit of nine or eighty six thousand dollars on that project. Um, that is additional monies we'll have to come up with. And on Mill Street, um, compared to the estimate we had previously, we're $302,000 short. And then with the closeout of the RIB funds, we're about $80,000 off on that. So the 600,000 covers us for um, finalizing construction of these two projects. Um, Myself or Casey can try to answer any questions you may have. I have one question. We still are carrying a bond on this. Am I correct, or are we going to pay off? We had a $6.7 million bond. Is that, and the state paid us money, their share of that. And so, we still are paying off on that bond. We have still more years. So in, is this in addition to what they pay us each year for that, or is it... Um, so this is specific to the RIB warrant article two years ago, which authorized the 3.1 million. We paid that loan off immediately, okay. which gave us a loan forgiveness number. This is the loan. And then on top of that, there's also state aid grant that we will be getting back. And right now that's estimated at the $648,000 over five years. So this is above what we usually get. Correct. And the only drawback is it's over five years, but you can always just um, put it on the books as a, as a grant receivable and yep. use it. That's great. That's, that's a nice gift. So if the board Merry would Christmas. like us to um, ink this warrant article that way to utilize those funds, therefore it will not hit the tax rate, we will go that route um, contingent on approval of that from the board or from the uh, governor and council on the 21st. I think that's great. Perfect. So, so that is just for the record not reflected on here. That would be yes, I, get, I absolutely understand. That's good news. Yes, it is. It takes care of an issue. Yeah. <laughs> right away. Right away. We're done on that one. <clears throat> okay. Uh, sewer line extensions. Um, and I think there may be some people in the audience that may want to speak to this, Mr. Chairman, just so you're aware. Um, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $500,000 for the purpose of installing low-pressure sewer extensions on Forest Road in the area of Cary Beach and Varney Road in the area of Friends Street. The appropriation is non-lapsing pursuant to RSA 327 Roman numeral 6 and shall lapse on December 31st, 2024 or upon completion of the project, whichever occurs first. So I, I received some feedback um, requesting information about the requirements uh, to connect. That is in your backup information. Um, we, we do have the authority to make um, people connect to this. Um, in addition, uh, we can assign a rate um, which is deemed by the local Board of Health. Um, the, Legal said that in our case, that would be the, the Board of Selectmen, and that's further supported by our town ordinance. Um, so the project itself, um, it's about 2,300 feet of low pressure sewer line um, on Forest Road, connecting a pro up to 25 properties, and about 900 feet on um, Varney Road, connecting approximately three properties. Oops. Um, current status of the proposed budget is 500,000. Um, design is taking place at this time. It's anticipated to be completed uh, toward the end of December. Uh, from that point, they'll go out and get updated cost estimates, hopefully by the end of January, but most likely um, first week in February. Uh, just a couple of items to compare and contrast. In 2013, there was a similar project done. Uh, that project cost $227,000. And then in 2019, there was a similar project done for 900 feet, uh, cost $150,000. Uh, 
Um, mind you, at this point, um, those projects neither considered a construction supervisor or um, contemplated ledge removal. Um, however, the 2019 project had core borings um, along the road to determine that there was no ledge issues. Um, we don't have that here on either one of these projects, so we could potentially run into ledge issues. Um, that kind of summarizes where we're at with this project. Um, I, this is a very important project. My concern is I, I'm, I'm fearful that when we get the cost estimate back, um, once the design's done, we may be running into um, numbers that significantly exceed the $500,000. Uh, I can try to answer any questions you may have. Uh, Steve Randall is here. He can also help uh, explain any construction cost questions that you may have. Why don't we just raise the amount on the Warren article and, yeah. and we could bond it? You know, I mean, I think this is a very needed um, project. The Patty and Fred Kane have done tests down there, and we have a high E. coli bacteria in the water in Jockey Cove. And I don't think we can let it go any longer. Um, we have an obligation to the health and safety of the citizens. You can't put your kids in water where it, uh, you have this high E. coli. We'd have our beaches shut down if it was there. So I would like to see us put either 800000 or more, bond it, and get this project done. I think not doing it is, is, un is unacceptable to me. So I would just ask if, if Steve could give in his expertise, granted limited knowledge of this project, but what a, he might put as a ballpark figure for a line in excess of 2,300 feet of low pressure sewer. Give me a minute. Sure. I would think you're going to be closer to the 800. Just even based off of that, I mean, 900 feet three years ago, and you know it's gone up. Yeah, it'd be close to 800. And if we hit ledge, we okay? Uh, no, if you hit ledge, I would suggest probably putting in some money for borings first. You know, like we did at Port Wedland, go through, do the do some borings first. At least you get a better idea if there is any ledge. There. We can't do that now, though. Can we? Sure. I mean. We have money that we can go out and do the borings. My feeling is this is one you got to go forward with, so I think you got to go do the borings and find out, and we put a number that we can do the project I, with. I think we can, we can it, it's a scheduling, I think, that's going to be the, yeah, it'll be the a scheduling challenging. Thing, we, we can get it, get the financing for it. I think it's getting it timely for. Right, the time scheduled to put the number together. For, for the bond hearing. Yeah. We, if we put the priority as. Couldn't do borings right now, and then if things go wrong on the forest road portion, we get eight hundred thousand towards just that, right? As a, for twenty-five properties as opposed to the three properties on Vardy. Mm -hmm. So we get rid of the wrong. If we had to, yeah. The priority would be the, the, the eight hundred towards forest. Right. Mm -hmm. Our best thing is to try to get the borings and get an accurate price. That's possible. We, we can we can find out tomorrow what the, yeah, the time can, frame of getting borings tomorrow. Now. For that, and see if they can get somebody up there to sewer hookup is six thousand. Yeah. Sewer is, and we have twenty five at six thousand. Well, but that doesn't do the construction. That's after. Correct. That's it's already built into right. the, the fees for the the entire sewer system. So yeah, when we did those fees, they know that it's, it's more of a fixed cost to come. So I'm understanding this board that they would like us to schedule this as a bond hearing. Um, and you want to stick with the eight hundred thousand dollar number right now, or we can do nine hundred thousand. I'm inclined to go higher and okay, be able and to then, bring it back down yeah. at the deliberative session or at the. It gives you more time. Yeah, I let's do the, whatever you think the highest should be, and then we can bring it down. <clears throat> and it's better to have the correct information before we go out. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll make that happen. 
Thank you, Steve. I believe Keynes may like to speak if you would allow that. I just want to um, <clears throat> say I appreciate Linda um, the help that you've or what you've just said, and I agree with Linda that we've been, this has been two summers that we've been watching the water. Um, this summer, luckily, it was a dry summer, so we didn't, you know, we're still monitoring it. We've been monitoring ourselves. Um, came to light two summers ago that there is definitely E. coli in that water. We've been working with the town, trying to get this resolved. Like Linda said, it needed to be resolved a year and a half ago. But, you know, we're trying to move forward, but it needs to be done before the summer. Can't, you know, the lake is, you know, the biggest asset we have up here, one of the biggest. And the fact that, you know, it's the carry, people go through there, it's not just us that are there. People go through, and I don't think anybody wants their kids swimming in E. coli. So I would just ask, whatever it takes to get it done, that you please get it done. And if anybody has any questions or wants to see it, feel free to come by. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Patty. Okay, so we will... Um Work on that. Uh, next item, police vehicle replacement. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $66,000 for the purchase of a police cruiser replacement vehicle and ancillary vehicle equipment with 5000 from the police detail revolving fund created by Warrant Article 23 in 2006 which is accumulated from details in prior years. Additionally, this warrant article also grants permission to the Wolfboro Police Commission to dispose of one existing cruiser by sale, auction, trade, or disposal with any proceeds to be returned to the town's general fund. Um, I believe Captain Livy and Commissioner Wood are here. If you have any questions for them, this is uh, a standard replacement. None? We'll move along. Uh, ask me contract, that's still pending. Police union contract, that's still pending. Town road upgrades. Uh, to see if the town will vote to raise an hey, appropriate. Jim, Luke reminded me of something. I was just wondering, could the old car, instead of disposing of it, could it be used for the new school officers? That was a question that I had last time. They're going to address that when we get to the school resource officer. Okay. To see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate the sum of $850,000 for the purpose of upgrading and engineering for town roads, sidewalks, and drainage systems. To authorize funds in the amount of $850,000 from the town's unassigned fund balance, this appropriation is non-lapsing pursuant to RSA 327 Roman numeral 6 and shall lapse on December 31, 2024 or upon completion of the project, whichever occurs first. So at this point, um, we have taken, um, moved the engineering back from $300,000 to $150,000. We're still con contemplating um, the Trask Roads, Diamond Corner, and Haynes Hill, um, and then engineering for um, the year 2024. Um, those, those were roads that have been scheduled for a couple years now. Um, and if you have any questions, I believe Steve Randall will be able to answer those for you. Um, this next slide shows you um, currently what our unassigned fund balance is. Um, so if we were to utilize uh, these funds um, based on where we're at today, we will still have a fund balance of 5.42% or 2.3 million. Uh, Casey ran that today and we can answer any questions you may have. And, and what did we run with for a fund, undesignated fund balance this year? When you say this year, 20 Well, uh, the last... <clears throat> so as the tax bill, um, yeah. it's the second number, 3.2 million, and we're at 7.35%. Okay. When, we, when the DRA sets the tax rate, that's when we confirm. Um, you used a million last year. Okay. If you proposed <clears> 850, you dropped down to 5.42. 
Uh, we'd like to keep the minimum at 5% for our policy and try to target at 8, but we haven't uh, closed this year out, so we might be adding to it. Okay. Fine. Any questions about the proposed projects? Seeing none, we'll move on. Um, Green Street upgrades. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $530,000 for the purpose of upgrading Green Street. Funds shall be utilized for engineering fees, stormwater drainage systems, and replacement of water and sewer mains and rebuilding the roadway. $100,000 from the Water Enterprise Fund shall be for the purpose of engineering and replacing vintage water mains, which service Green Street. 430000 from general taxation shall be for the purpose of engineering and replacing the existing sewer mains in Green Street, stormwater drainage systems, and rebuilding Green, Green Street. This appropriation is non-lapsing pursuant to RSA 327, Roman numeral 6, and shall lapse on December 31, 2024, upon completion of the project, whichever occurs first. I think this... Um, pretty clearly explains what we're doing. We did this a couple years ago on High End Park. Uh, it worked quite well. Um, and uh, Steve Randall's here along with Rod Dempsey to speak any questions you may have. Um, we've had some preliminary conversations with the engineers on the topic. I have a question. When we go to the bond hearing and the deliberative session, will we do the problem, the solution? We'll have that slide. <clears throat> okay. Yep. We will. Any other questions? Seeing none, we'll move along. Um, this was provided to us from the assessing office. Shall the town of Wolfboro vote in accordance with RSA 3227A to readopt the provisions of RSA? 7228 previously adopted for an optional veterans tax credit at $500 a year. If readopted, all veterans tax credits previously adopted will also be $500 per year, the same amount as the optional veterans tax credit if readopted and approved. This article shall take effect for the 2023 tax year. This is very similar to what is on the DRA's website. No questions. Okay, moving along. So in your packet, um, you have the school resource officer. Um, there was a lot of conversation about this. Um, so we, we tried to rewrite the article. Um, so you, you have an updated uh, warrant article which shows um, a chart outlining um, the expenses. The article reads, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $72,706 for the purpose of creating a new position within the Wolfboro Police Department effective June 5th, 2023. During the regular school year, this position shall be assigned the position of school resource officer SRO for the middle school. The remainder of time outside the regular school year, this position shall be assigned as a Town of Wolfboro Patrol Officer. The school district, SAU 49, shall pay the Town of Wolfboro 50% of payroll and benefits, which is $22,338 for this position up to 72 school days, August 2023 through December 2023 outlined below. This position shall be created and filled only if both the town warrant article and the SAU 49 operating budget pass. If both articles are successful, this position shall be fully funded in future years with the SAU 49 paying half of the payroll and benefits for up to 180 school days outlined above. Um, specifics on this, uh, Commissioner Wood and Captain Livy are here. Nice job of rewriting it. Takes care of all my needs. The only thing I see is it's the school resource officer. You need an R at the 
in that just got typo, but very nicely done. Um, Brian, would you like to address your question to? Yeah. I thought they were going to address it. That's what Mr. Whitson. So the question is, would it be prudent to keep our car that we're retiring and use it for the resource officer car, especially because it's such a short distance from the police department to the middle high school complex? Um, well. The car that's going out currently has no transmission. Um, we've, we've got a, 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 an existing one-in, one-out agreement, if you will, uh, that goes back several years. Um, so this is what we're doing this year, is we're taking a car that is badly rusted, lacks a, tr a working transmission, pushing that out so that we can order, you know, get a new vehicle in, in place of it. As far as this school resource officer, in addition to the one that currently is at the high school, they will both have cruisers at their, you know, at the school site. Um, there may be times they're going to be called away in the case of emergency. We're going to draw those resources away if they're necessary. Um, so they need to have that transportation. But it'll be done with the existing fleet. Um, Linda posed the question to me on the phone the other evening when we were talking about this, about um, because there has been some discussion about adding additional police personnel to fully staff our, our midnight shift um, relative to officer safety and public safety. Again, even if there was an increase in personnel, we would not be requesting any change whatsoever from our current fleet of 11 cruisers. Um, we maintain that as the optimum amount. Um, we could go as high as 22 people, which we won't be anywhere near that, you know, probably before I check out from the earth, this earth, and uh, there won't be any need to, even at that number, to increase any, any volume of cruisers. But, we will use the existing free fleet as we do now on a rotating basis, and they will have, as they should have, working cruisers at the schools, uh, fully operational cruisers, if, if necessary, to leave and, and, and go assist an officer somewhere else. So, is that? Yeah, I just didn't know if the car had any value left. No, in typically when they get get um, get replaced, they're they're in pretty sad shape. We're trying now to mitigate the rust issues by undercoating and doing things. Um, to try to lengthen the, the length of life for these cars. But the other thing is engine hours, the amount of mileage they put on and so forth, are just normal wear and tear far quicker than, than, than you or I would in our vehicles. Any other questions? Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, Steve. Okay. Um, Moving into the capital reserve funds. Um, this actually isn't a capital reserve fund appropriation this year. This is um, because of uh, escalations and because of um, the need to purchase um, or, or buy the ladder truck um, surcharge. Uh, we're looking at the best option as a lease. Um, so the the straight out purchase is really at this point not a good option so it reads to see if the town will vote to authorize the selectmen to enter into a lease purchase agreement in the amount of eight hundred thousand dollars payable over a term not to exceed three years for the purpose of acquiring a replacement fire engine and for the selectmen to authorize the sum of three hundred thousand dollars from the existing fire truck and apparatus capital reserve fund as a deposit for said purchase. This agreement will not contain an escape clause. Um, if you look at this spreadsheet that I've provided for you, um, it shows the original request um, was a capital reserve appropriation of 452,000 with a CIP request uh, for this year of 300,000 which brought us to the $750,000 price. Unfortunately, today, um, with the need to have paid $146,000 for the um, ladder truck, we do not have the funds to buy out a piece of apparatus at that $300,000 appropriation amount. So we believe that the um, lease purchase option is the best 
and the chief has got a series of pictures which he's provided you that he'll be able to run through and hopefully answer any questions you have, Chief. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Tom Zotti, Fire Chief. Um, if you were at the CIP presentation we did in August, you've seen these, but we thought it would be beneficial um, <clears throat> to actually demonstrate and show you what we're frankly talking about. Um, the pictures are in the town manager's handout as well, but uh, we thought it was more effective, frankly, in color. Um, essentially, what we're looking at with Engine 4 is, is the rust is getting to us. Um, you'll see in the pictures there is some surface rust and so forth, and that's really not what the major concern is. As you look at the pictures, um, if we could move, there we go. Uh, roughly in the middle, lower part of the middle of that picture, you'll see part of the frame. Uh, for lack of a better term, we'll call it a sandwich. What's happening is uh, the rust has infiltrated into between the two sections of the frame rails. And as you go through the pictures, you kind of see that same theme carried through. And that, that's our major concern. This year, we were able to clean that up, if you will, uh, with the able assistance of the uh, Public Works head mechanic. And um, we cleaned that up and were able to undercoat it in an attempt to slow down the process. Um, we have our fingers crossed. Uh, I don't expect it would stop the rust, but it will hopefully slow it down. Um, that has the potential to get to the point where the truck cannot get an inspection sticker at some point in the future. Um, that's why we concentrated on that, to try to get that problem slowed down. The other issue we face with Engine 4 is, uh, and it's attached to the packet that we just, uh, the deputy just distributed to you. We have an engine problem that's been ongoing. Um, I'll try to explain it as best I understand it. The crankcase pressure tends to rise over time and at some point it could build up to the point of doing significant damage. We've been able to mitigate it by changing a crankcase ventilation filter that's supposed to be more or less permanent on a semi-regular basis. Um, I would equate it to in a passenger car if you remove the oil filter and replaced it with a plug. You could run the vehicle for a period of time as long as you did a routine oil replacement and didn't run into anything dramatic. But at some point, it's not designed to operate that way and we're liable to have a catastrophic failure. We've been able to head that off. Um, and that's frankly kind of where we are. We have an estimate from a year ago of about $17,000 to fix that. Obviously, based on what's happened in the last year, we expect that's probably closer to 20, if not more. Um, and then we get into the discussion of how much money do we spend to keep the vehicle on the road for another year or two or three at best. So as part of our CIP proposal, we propose to move this up a year to start the replacement process. Where we are today um, with uh, some of the delays that I think you're familiar with in terms of uh, the discussion of the latter situation, should we be successful in moving forward with this and place an order for a vehicle, say next March after the town meeting vote, we're probably looking at a two year plus build. So we still have to get engine four through another two years of plus a few months uh, on a good day. We are actively interviewing manufacturers to try to develop a spec uh, for the engine that would replace uh, engine four. Um, we can't rule out the possibility that we find something that meets our needs that has a quicker turnaround time and we'd certainly welcome that. Um, but talking to other towns and to the manufacturers, most of the contracts we're hearing about in the last few months are a 720 day build, two years. Um, so that's part of what we're trying to head off here. So at the end of the day, moving the engine four replacement up a year, but now we're into a two year replacement, we end up, if we were successful, receiving it about the time we would have if we hadn't moved it up in the first place. Um, and that's kind of the situation we find ourselves in. Um, the 
proposal uh, because we're told by legal counsel that the existing capital reserve fund can't be used for lease purchase. It takes a vote that we're asking you to consider to do that. The intent would be to put the down payment on the lease purchase vehicle out of the existing capital reserve and not contribute to capital reserve for the period of time we're making the lease purchase payment out of the budget. And then we'd resume our capital improvement program as we tend to know it. Um, I'm happy to try to answer any questions. I did include, as a by way of background, um, our maintenance costs for Engine 4 since 2018. Um, and there's, again, the copy of that estimate for uh, the engine repair. And we did include, as an example or a sample, one of a couple of lease purchase options that we have. Um, we presume the interest rate has changed some since this math was done, but that's where we find ourselves at the moment. Yeah, Tom, have you gotten far enough into your the thought process on putting the specs together um, regarding the double frame there, you know, the sandwich frame that you have there, um, of having a single frame truck built? You know, I the, think they can do them with a you know stronger steel and make a deeper web in it. So you don't have that sandwich there that's going to collect the moisture and cause that rust in between. That is one of the um, primary considerations we're looking at. I mean, obviously, we're concerned about the capabilities of the vehicle and so forth. But this is a problem we've had for years. And it's, uh, you know, with past vehicles that have since, you know, been uh, decommissioned or traded in and replaced. Um, it's common to our area. The concern is um, not all manufacturers offer that frankly the reason uh, one of the main reasons we went with our current engine two with the seagrave and then followed it up with the ladder purchase from seagrave is they use that uh, i don't know if the proper term is single frame construction if you will that avoids this problem right. among other things but that's one of the considerations yep. Um, one of the tasks of the truck committee will be to determine what our options are with the frame construction and decide, you know, is this something um, we can spec uh, either with Seagrave or another manufacturer, depending on where, where the numbers come out. But yeah, obviously it's, it's a top of the mind thing because it's, it's a problem today and it's been a problem in the past. Yep. So it looks like we'll have about 100,000 left in the if if we move forward with the three hundred thousand dollar down payment, we've zeroed out capital oh, I was reserve. Looking at what the uh, lease payment would be. Really well, that this option, and I apologize, I could have included others. This one is based on a two hundred thousand dollar down payment. Um, but it, it kind of gives you what kind of idea what kind of numbers we're looking at. I mean, but I, on that too, like over the the first option, the three year option, is it, and this with this with this with these two hundred thousand dollars down hypothetically. It's about fifty thousand dollars in interest you're going to pay over those over those three years. You bump it out to five years, you're only paying about twenty thousand dollars more. You're paying seventy as opposed to fifty. That's not I mean, a bad deal. I th I think we're trying to, and I, I defer to the manager. I think we're trying to balance um, the interest costs over time with the fact that we're not contributing to CIP for future purchases right. during that period. The longer we go, you're right, it may be marginally more money in interest uh, and keeps the payment low, but at the same time, that's another year or two or three. We're not contributing to the CIP for the out years. But we don't have to necessarily, if we didn't do it this year, we could start um, doing the CIP. So, putting it in the capital reserve account, you know, because if we're, we that it doesn't give us any wiggle room if anything goes wrong right. with any of the trucks. And one of the things we've done with these these funds was to have some money that out of nowhere something breaks, a surcharge so, or something comes yeah, along. <laughs> you know, my feeling if we can pay it out of this, I wouldn't make any promises about them. So I mean, I, I think one of the things, the ways this may work out for us. Next one. I want. Um, if if we were to go this this lease purchase route, um, and we did a three hundred thousand dollar deposit, the truck is most likely not going to arrive for two years. Therefore, we won't have the first lease payment for two years. 
Therefore, next year, we raise and appropriate $200,000 to put into that account. And then the following, year, the following year's following. payments get made. When we're making those payments, they simply roll into right. the budget. Um, if, we, if we're talking about a 196000 or 200000 round figure annual contribution, if you will, I think the idea was to kind of spread that out. Um, we make the down payment, sign a contract, uh, move forward with a payment of roughly two hundred thousand dollars, arguably the same money we would have put in CIP, and then once it's paid, resume the CIP contribution. If there's a gap in there somewhere that makes it work in another way, I, I think we're certainly so, here's a question. Open to when's it. the next truck coming down the the pike? The CIP. As it sits today, um, barring any other unforeseen changes, um, would involve, I think it's 2025, four, four, we would replace our, our air packs, and we don't have another CIP purchase until 2034, which would be to replace engine one. We do have a fairly long window of time where we don't have a scheduled purchase. Okay, and so that because that affects how long we can lease it yes. for. Because if we have two years and then we did a five-year lease, we're at eight years. We're still have a little bit of wiggle room. So what? My my only question, to just going back one more time. So if we did stretch it out to a five-year lease, let's just say we're using these numbers in this Sea Graves thing here. Let's say we put two hundred thousand dollars. Now we're going to put more than that, but you know, one hundred twenty-four thousand a year as opposed to one ninety-nine. You take the balance of that two hundred thousand. You put it in the, mm -hmm. you put it in the account. Okay, fifty. If we're going to pay fifty thousand dollars anyways in interest, if we stretch it two more years, which is actually now seven years, because we won't get the truck for, for two more. Now you're talking about twenty thousand dollars more in interest, but you're stretching it out over another two years. You're already paying fifty anyways. Just on this math here, it, leases don't normally make sense to me, but if we're going to pay fifty. Put the extra amount of money in the in the kitty in case something does go wrong with another vehicle, and we're stretching the truck out. You know, in smaller payments. So as long as we don't need another one for ten years, we oh, still have wiggle room. Yeah, yeah. I think we want to have some money in that account. And some, so what we'll do is we, we'll go back, we'll refine these numbers with updated um, lease numbers from a couple of. Different yeah, we're in the process of collecting these. I think this example is is legit the issue is i i suspect the interest rates have gone up since this was prepared so we'll bring this back to you with with more refined numbers um and you know look at the option of extending that time frame out if if that's the best solution um, if i may just um to update you on the status of um, the latter. It is at the dealer in Massachusetts at Fleet Masters for a final fit up. We've ordered the mounting equipment that will be installed on the vehicle, primarily in the compartments to hold our equipment and so forth. It's being lettered and that sort of thing. Uh, we're having an independent ladder test done, which I believe was scheduled to be done today. I haven't heard about results yet. Um, we're not expecting any issues. Um, we do wanted to uh, give you kind of a heads up that once we do take delivery, we're, we're assuming around Christmas time, maybe hopefully a little sooner. Um, once we do the uh, training with the manufacturer and so forth, you'll start to see it around town quite a bit. I just, we just kind of felt we wanted to give you that heads up because it's a different animal from what we've had in the past. There'll be a lot of driver training going on. You'll be seeing it in parking lots with the, with the, the bucket being raised and so forth. We're going to spend a fair amount of time, of course, weather permitting and so forth, um, to bring both our career and our call staff up to speed in its operation. Because uh, the fact, you know, we again, didn't want to go another winter without an aerial in town, and we want to get that in full service as reasonably fast as we can. The other thing we wanted to, let's say, announce is we took the, the recommendation of the truck committee. We, we will be referring to it. Uh, the old one it replaced, you know, is Ladder 1. This will be known as Truck 5. And the way that came about um, was because it uh, has the bucket, the platform, we felt that the designation of truck was, was appropriate. 
and no, we don't have four others, but this is the fifth aerial the town has owned going back to the 1940s and carried through. So we thought that was kind of a nice homage to the past was to be able to refer to it as truck five. So if you start to see that, that's, that's where it comes from. Um, we were going to put together a little presentation. We have pictures of all the previous ones. And uh, so that's kind of where we are. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to well, answer. Here's something a little, a little off a little off the subject, but um, Paul Erickson, who is an architect out of Virginia who specializes in fire stations, um, actually said that at one of their stations um, in the Central Valley Fire District Station 1 in Montana, they actually have a building connected to their station just for the purpose of washing fire trucks, apparatus, <laughs> and other vehicles in the town. Um, and they say that it saved them um, a lot of money over the years by making the, their vehicles have a much longer life because they can be washed on a regular basis with an so We do that facility. today. We do it either, either we pull them out onto the apron in nice weather or we wash them in the apparatus bay when it's chilly. Um, we do try to take into account um, after a call, for example, it may be the next morning before it gets washed because we don't want to cover the, the vehicle with water and have it go to another call and freeze up and not be able yep. to open a compartment. But no, we do routinely wash the vehicles in, in the building. Thank it is chief. one of the considerations in the design of the new facility was how, how we do that. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, uh, moving along, um, Public Works Vehicles Equipment Replacement Capital Reserve Fund. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $300,000 to be added to the existing Public Works Vehicles and Equipment Capital Reserve Fund, which is under the custody of the Trustee of Trust Funds with a selectman designated as agents to expend. So I was asked to see the pre if, if we could provide the previous spreadsheet. That is in your packet, the green um, outlined projects were the traditional ones which were scheduled for 2023. Um, HD7, we rebuilt the motor in that a couple years ago. Um, so we think we are able to get a couple more years out of that. Um, HD12, that is a Chevy Silverado, three quarter ton. Uh, Foreman truck, that particular truck is scheduled for replacement this year, and that is recommended um, that it will be handed down to solid waste. And lastly uh, is the trash compactor, if you recall, we replaced that this past summer. So that is the previous working spreadsheet. Um, I would also note on this that HD8, um, the case loader, that is a vehicle which we're proposing to come forward and uh, replace this year as well, and we'll explain why in a moment. So the problem we have is the CIP program for public works covers 50-plus vehicles and equipment, a value of excess of $3 million. We're running into cost escalation, high cost of ownership of these vehicles with emissions, electronics, work environment, and quite frankly, um, quality is a problem. Uh, when these things are done at the end of their life cycle, they have little to no trade-in value. Um, solution is a replacement schedule, which is currently under review by the director and uh, his mechanic. Um, we have seen some benefits with an improved maintenance program. Um, and what we're considering going forward is purchasing vehicles and equipment of higher quality. Now, granted, that may come with um, greater upfront costs. So the proposed replacements for 2023, uh, HD8, which is the case loader as discussed, is primarily was the primary loader up until 2019. It has in excess of 25,000 miles, 25,000 hours on it, um, and it requires 25 to $30,000 in repairs for motor hydraulics, um, breaks the the motor is it's just getting tired as you can imagine with 25,000 hours on it uh, This vehicle was originally scheduled for replacement in 2027 um, What we're looking to do is replace it with a smaller more agile machine 
uh, equipped with a pickup broom and a plow. Um, in the <coughs> estimated uh, machine is 140 with 35,000, so the total cost of that machine um, is $175,000. Here is um, the machine with a um, pickup broom on it and the um, plow. Um, now, one of the advantages to the pickup broom right now, we don't have any type of mechanical pickup for um, whether it's the side of the streets, um, you know, if there's an accident anywhere or um, a truck loses a load of dirt, to be able to pick that up. Right now, it's all manual. Um, this will improve safety, efficiency going forward um, and help us to keep our streets clean. Uh, in addition, we are looking at HD12, which is the three-quarter ton foreman's truck. Um, that particular truck has been well-maintained, was has been scheduled for replacement uh, since its purchase in 2023. It will go to solid waste um, as the existing vehicle uh, has been replaced as it would not pass inspection. Um, in 2019, this particular truck, the foreman's truck, had a new sander installed and 2022 had a new uh, work body installed. Uh, so what we're looking at is a new foreman truck uh, with a plow and sander, uh, estimated cost of $60,000, and the existing truck will be reassigned to um, highway or solid waste. Steve Randall is here to answer any specific questions you may have. That is a quick overview of what the proposal is for the Highway Capital Reserve. I have a question. I, one of the things that we found that we put a useful life is 20 years or 25 years, and that is not the case. Can we go through this spreadsheet and get them to what is reasonable prices of today and life expectancy so we don't run into, you know, a place where we've got vehicles that need to Placed yes. and not the money. We've actively been doing that over the last few weeks okay. to get uh, a more accurate replacement schedule based on actual, not time of ownership per se, but actual quality of what the vehicle is. Okay. And then to try to get a more updated replacement cost. Then we can take and come up with a better replacement program. Yes, that's what, that's what I think we're looking at. And we will be very ready for that come CIP. Yes, we will. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be very helpful. Any other questions about this? Thank you, Steve. Uh, sidewalk Capital Reserve Fund. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $75,000 to be added to the existing Sidewalk Capital Reserve Fund, which is under the custody of the trustee of trust funds with the selectmen designated as agents to expend. Uh, you have a spreadsheet, and I will get you a better copy of it, but it's in this. Um, this was actually put together and outlines the sidewalk conditions of the 7.2 miles worth of sidewalks, I think it is, and recommends um, uh, places a good, fair, or poor condition on the sidewalk. Um, so that lays it out. Um, currently, we have... Um, 4.81 of our 7.5 miles of sidewalks that are in poor condition. Um, so we did put an RFP out um, for the um, sidewalks to be looked at on North Main Street, uh, Central Ave, um, and Morrissey's in that area. We actually did the repairs uh, in the area of Morrissey's. The highway department did as it was very necessary, but the problem we ran into was the bids were so high because we were so late in the season that it was not a beneficial plan going forward. So the, the thought process going forward is to take this spreadsheet that lays out the condition of the sidewalks, um, hopefully be able to put out a new RFP after the beginning of the year so that we can get uh, these sidewalks hopefully addressed um, before summertime hits. Um, that kind of outlines what our plan here is. Any specifics to that, Steve Randall may be able to help me answer. I'm assuming that 
when we do the Route 28, we'll take care of the uh, south. We'll do the sidewalks at that time for unless it's an emergency repair. Correct, and that's exactly what Morrissey's was. Is it was in such poor condition, it had to be addressed immediately, and Steve's crew handled that to get it resolved. All good. Building maintenance capital reserve fund. See if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $50,000 to be added to the existing building maintenance capital reserve fund, which is under the custody of the trustee of trust funds with selectmen designated as agents to expend this capital reserve fund. I don't think this needs a whole lot of explanation. This thing has worked out very well for us. Um, and we we're thankful to have it. So any questions? Wonderful. Uh, wastewater treatment plant to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $200,000 to be added to the existing wastewater treatment plant capital reserve fund, which is under the custody of the trustee of trust funds with selectmen designated as agents to expend. Uh, again, this is uh, the pumps that would pump the affluent up to the detention pond. Um, they need to be replaced. This is what these funds will be used for. And these pumps are something that when the plant is upgraded, they won't need to be changed out. They will be able to be streamlined in with the update of the wastewater treatment plant. In my understanding, we're going to deal with that catwalk. Steve Randall will come <laughs> up and speak to you regarding the catwalk at the pond. The wonderful the catwalk's already out. Oh, it's already out? Yeah, we removed it last week. Oh, great. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, no, Monday. Sorry. Monday. Okay. Came out on Monday. Uh, most of it is removed from site. Some of it is still there. Uh, we need to load it. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. You knew it was in process. I'm glad it's done. <laughs> so Thank you for the answer, Steve. Uh, Water Resources Non-Capital Reserve Fund. See if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $25,000 to be added to the existing non Capital Reserve Fund pursuant to RSA 351C for the purpose of watershed management plan, including engineering design, permitting, best management practice for stormwater drainage and nutrient mitigation, grant matching, and education, which is under the trustee of trust funds with selectmen as agents to expend from this non capital reserve fund. Good? Abenaki? to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $25,000 to be added to the existing Abenaki Capital Reserve Fund, which is under the custody of the trustee of trust funds with selectmen designated as agents to expend. Any questions can be addressed to Christine. She's saying no questions, please. Yeah. Do you want to go home? <laughs> <laughs> we do too. Moving along. Uh, tree removal and replacement expendable trust fund to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $125,000 to create a tree removal replacement expendable trust fund. Said funds shall be under the custody of the trustee of trust funds and to designate the selectmen as agents to expend. So on this one, we had some conversations. Um, Christine is working with um, us being a tree city to be able to... Uh, hopefully leverage some um, information and education from them. Um, the, the thought process here is we had 260 plus trees identified um, in the right of way on South Main Street. Um, thought process really is we need to uh, draw our attention and take care of some of those trees. Um, conversation with Steve Randall and with um, couple of engineers. Um, at this point, we would only really look at tree removal in those areas because we're going to be hopefully redoing that section of South Main Street in the next couple of years. It really wouldn't make a whole lot of sense to plant new trees in there if we're going to be ripping all of that area up. So the plan going forward is really to um, remove a lot of our diseased trees, create a adopt a tree program with Parks and Rec in conjunction with um, Tree City USA and be, I, I think Christine's already got um, in a rec desk an account created 
Um, she's worked with Casey, the finance director. Um, it's just a matter of getting the program, getting the time to get the program up and running. So in other words, this isn't going to be a 2022. It's going to, if anybody's going to donate a tree, it's going to be in 2023. Yeah. I, I, would you say that is correct, or, or do you think we would be able to accept donation in 2022 for tree, Christine? So it is set up to be able to accept at this time. And we figured we would just do an a, a bulk approval, you know, not every single um, donation right. needs to be approved. And is it going in a donation account for that? Okay, so it's a donation account. Okay. So they, they've got that work on, so we're moving forward. And that is the warrant articles. I can also tell you that we did receive a petition warrant article today. Um, which I'll get to you. It's requesting $50,000 for the Carpenter School playground. And I that thought, came into Pat. I thought we were going to put a warrant article out on the bike trails. So Did that is in my town manager's report to get direction from you <laughs> as to do you, the board of selectmen, want me to work on drafting a warrant article with Chris, or do you want that to come in as a petition? Any other discussion of warrant articles right now? What do you think? Uh, just relative to the bikes, do we want it to be petition or do we want to write it? Yeah, petition. Petition, I think. Yeah. Ask I think them to petition. petition. Yeah. Yeah. I will work with Chris yep. to have them petition it. Okay, we have any other business? Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, I have, have one thing to bring up. Um, on Jim's request, I've been kind of working to get the tree felling project uh, going and done up at Libby Museum. I just want to report that the tree company will be there on Wednesday, the 21st of December through Friday, the 23rd, to take those trees down. I think there's about nine or 10 trees behind the museum there. Um, we got, you know, got it all lined up to get done to that. It's one of the things the friends needed to have done this year so they could get their grant money to us that they're paying their portion of. And one thing I did want to bring up is that the, the company that's going to do it is going to request that that parking lot be closed down for the time frame that they're in there. So I don't know whether we need a vote or not or just consensus to you know, put it on our website, maybe oh. put up some kind of a sign up there in case, because the lake won't be frozen by that time, maybe, more than likely. In case you never know, somebody might show up with a boat and trailer want to park <laughs> there. So it'd be nice to not have a surprise there on that Wednesday morning of a boat trailer sitting in there with no way no to get hold of them. So um, just wanted to bring that to the attention, get it out to the, the public road. and stuff. So I'll make a motion that we close the uh, um, boat or the parking lot at the Libby from December 21st through the 23rd. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. If you're okay, I'll work with the director to ensure that that's blocked off. Okay. Will do. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Committee reports. Ryan? Budget committee meeting, budget committee meeting, budget committee meeting, <laughs> budget committee meeting, and a Libby Museum meeting that we all went to. I have a, for the Heritage Commission, uh, the Heritage Commission has developed an honor awards program to promote understanding of and appreciation of the history of the town, to recognize those who seek to preserve important historic town resources and promote the value of historic preservation, to encourage others to embark on historic preservation or education efforts, and to highlight the work of the Wolfboro Heritage Commission and the value that it brings to the community. And they anticipate calling for nominations in late winter with recognition awards in May, which is National Preservation Month. Also, the townwide survey of historic resources got underway in September, and the commission and the consultant would welcome information from townspeople about significant surviving historic properties. Uh, for that, contact Maggie Steer of the Heritage Commission. That final report is expected in September uh, of 2023. Three, uh, three members of the Heritage Commission are also serving on the Charette Implementation Committee. Among the other initiatives, they have agreed to complete a nomination of the old 
Municipal Electric Building for the State Register of Historic Places. That's my only uh, report for this time. Okay, I've had um, four meetings uh, with the Libby Search Committee that's up and running, and one trustees meeting of the Libby uh, Library. No, the Libby of the Library. Um, last night, Wolfboro, I've had three meetings. I had a Charette meeting. Uh, Friends of Pop Whalen, I've had two meetings. And remind everybody, uh, December 14th, 630 to 830 is the open house. It is a fantastic building. I can't believe how light it is. So please come out and look at it. Uh, today, I was in the interviews for looking for our part-time permanent secretary. As Brian said, we've had budget committee, budget committee, budget committee meetings. Uh, I went to the chamber quarterly meeting as with uh, Luke. And the assessing subcommittee of Wolfboro Waters, uh, we met and we brought um, everybody, well, we brought people from Winnipesaukee, Wentworth, Crescent Lake, Russ Pond, and Mirror Lake together to sit down and talk about what they had done and what they had found about their lakes over this last summer and in the past and we had a great discussion and they're now going to do it every six months to make sure they keep on working together and have those kinds of conversations. Is there a um, need for a trustee at the library? Uh, I think they're going to put that, I think that notice is up, yeah. Is it up or are they going to be putting it up? No, I think, I think they put it up. I think they did. It should be, did you get a, it should be on the town website. I don't know, I'll check. I, okay. don't, I don't think it's been up as of yet. They have, let me tell you, they've worked on it. I thought it had gone up. But okay. Can you check with them for us? Sure. Thank you. Dave? Hey, I had uh, friends of Abenaki in the process of getting the lights up on the slopes. The rope has been done. And they're ready to make snow. That's all I have. Brad? Let's see. We had a uh, planning board meeting last night. Uh, nice, good, long one. Um, <laughs> got out of there about 11 o'clock and stuff. So <laughs> went over all the uh, proposed warrant articles for, for the coming uh, March vote. Um, as Brian mentioned, we all met as trustees uh, for Libby there uh, last week there. And to remind everybody, too, that uh, the Wolfboro Community TV is the annual meeting is going to be next, i um, sorry, on the 21st, Wednesday the 21st, um, at 8 o'clock in the morning, um, which all the selectmen are invited and stuff, and uh, town manager and everybody to come up and see uh, anything new going on there, get a tour of the uh, uh, studio and everything. So hope to see some people at that. That was it. Hey, town manager's report. Uh, first of all, uh, it is posted on the, the trust, uh, trustee vacancy for the library is posted on the library's web page. Okay, I thought it was on the library I already hit the Pop Whalen open house. Um, please come out and see it. Um, it's, it's a good example of where your um, hard earned tax dollar has gone. Uh, this is a wonderful building it's it's quite amazing to see it compared to what it was um, Abenaki lighting as Dave said that's that's pretty much buttoned up at this point uh, just needed to advise um, the board that there was they ran into an issue with light fixtures so the light fixture which they had originally um, proposed to use was back ordered um, months so they were able to um, find an alternative light um, that actually it, it's it's more directional um, so I, I think that that um, I will forward that information to you but they ended up having to change styles of lights um, so you're aware um, holiday hours uh, just to let people know the town clerk's office will be closed uh, December 19th through the 26th, and town offices will be closed uh, Friday the 23rd and Monday the 26th. And the last thing is single track warrant article. You guys have addressed that, and I've advised you of the petition warrant article. Other than that, just budget committee meetings and working on the warrants. 
Oh, yeah, go ahead and mention that, Linda, please. Um, the uh, town board of selectmen are going to have a celebration of the retirement of Dave Ford on Friday, December 30th from 2 to 4 p.m. Light refreshments up here in the Great Hall. Okay. Any questions from the press? No. What more can be said, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Any public input? Oh, we can even know it would be somebody. <laughs> Is that better? All right. Well, I think everyone else in the room could hear me, but I'm trying to be quick because I want to go home as much as you guys probably want to go home too. But I promised that I'd do this, and Amy told me to come and present. So um, uh, where was I? Um, we discussed some of the logistics. Uh, a, a place that we found to be a good place to store the wood was according when meeting with Steve Randall. Um, they're going to be organizing the brush pile over uh, by the transfer station, and when they reorganize that, they can make a plethora of space to have cords of wood there um, for, you know, for, to collect donations, to stack, and to give out to people um, to help with heating assistance for people who use wood. And um, actually, conveniently today, some person who runs a wood processor down south about an hour of here said that someone in town had heard about this and wants to donate five to ten cords of wood to our community, which we cannot do until we are allowed to accept in-kind donations by a vote. And um, I, guess, I guess word is spreading. I have not solicited any donations at this time because it's up to the town and the voters to make those decisions and no solicitations can be done until the Warmth and More Fund can collect this kind of wood. And um, on top of that, once the Warmth and More Fund could collect in-kind donations and establish a wood bank, um, the town could qualify for up to $20,000 worth of grants to help the wood bank purchase more wood and to operate, which would be completely volunteer run and it would take maybe one to two volunteer days a year and um, someone like myself to coordinate with Amy to get wood to people in need. Um, the benefit to the Warmth and More Fund too is every dollar that we're not buying wood that we can just get wood donated is a dollar that we can spend on someone's electrical or um, fossil fuel heating. So that's all. I just hope that the Board of Selectmen would consider that. And I would be more than willing to take any questions now, or we can all go home. And if we have a Warren article for your next meeting, I would take questions if I was on the agenda then. So that's Who's all. Who's going to write the Warren article? Are you going to write it, or do you have wording for him to write it? I, I did write um, some draft. I'm not a lawyer, so it's probably not a good draft. Um, Luke shaking his head. He definitely agrees. Yeah, I'm not a lawyer, and it probably wasn't a good draft. And I shared it with Amy and, um, and Jim, but I would be more than happy to keep coordinating with them and to figure out how to make the legalese work for the legalese higher beings to let us do it. So that's Sounds all. Sounds good. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Thank you for indulging me. So I, I guess the question I have for the board is, does the board want to entertain this as a Board of Selectmen Warren article, or would you like to see this as a petition? I think we do it as a Board of Selectmen. I think we did that with the war, Warmth and More. Right. It's Absolutely. just an extension of that, that uh, Warren article. Yeah. Okay. I will work on it. <laughs> okay. Any other public input? I'll entertain a motion to go into non-public. So moved. Second. 
All those in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. yes. yes.